So if we could just start out, um, you know, obviously this Willie Smith case has been in the news um, in the months leading up to scheduled execution, which is um, supposed to occur on Thursday, barring any further court action. Um, so if we could just start, tell me about your position on the death penalty and whether it's evolved at all since you've left office. Well, first, let me say that the governor ultimately decides if this carry, if it's carried forward or not. Uh, and that burden is placed on the governor in Alabama. Now, not every state is that way. But in Alabama, uh, it's not the judge, uh, it's not the jury, uh, it's the governor that decides whether or not uh, someone lives or dies. So that's a heavy burden. Uh, it was a heavy burden for me. Uh, I had to deal with this eight times when I was governor. Uh, we had a little reprieve for a couple of years when uh, we had no one on death row. Well, not on death row, but had no one that was actually sentenced to death here in that state. Uh, but every time that I had uh, to deal with this, um, I really uh, agonized over it because, you know, first of all, I'm a physician and sign an oath to you know, uh, I, I cared about the people, even those that were going to be put to death. Uh, so I, I just, I, I struggled with it. Uh, it, was a, it was a very difficult situation. But uh, here again, I was also sworn as the governor to the state. So I was put in a situation as a physician and as a governor that I had to decide which was the route I had to go. And at that time I was the governor. Uh, and so I had to make those decisions. So ultimately you made the decision to move forward with those eight executions. Um, and to my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you granted any clemencies during your time in office, is that right? I did not. I had some that uh, struggled over and, and I came to those, uh, but you know, you have to take into account a lot of things. You have to take into account the families that were involved, that lost a loved one, went over all of the things that took place, went over the crime itself and, and what person who had been accused and sentenced to death, what they actually did. Uh, but much of the material that was brought to me came from the prosecutors. And I worried about that some because it was it was somewhat one-sided, uh, but I got the best information that I could possibly get at the time. Uh, my legal team, uh, they would put all of this together, but here again, the information that they got came from the attorney general's office. Uh, and so it, it was from the prosecutor side. We generally were not given things about the person as far as Oh, they're, maybe their mental status. Uh, I, I don't remember anybody specifically that was like this particular person uh, that had some mental disabilities. Um, but we, we took what we had and, and made a tough decision. So tell me a little bit about when you get those. So I, first of all, did every case come to you before the execution actually occurred where you at least presented with some information, even if it may have been, you know, a little one-sided, as you said, you were presented with information about all of these executions? Yes, we, very thorough, very thorough information that was given to our legal department, uh, our legal staff, uh, my legal advisor and people in his office. It was given to them by the attorney general's office. And, and you know, we knew about the crime. We went over it completely. I mean, they went over everything with me about what took place with this particular crime and why they were sentenced as they were. Did you ever consider, you know, because you were getting information from prosecutors from the attorney general's office, did you ever consider reaching out to a defense of one of these inmates or somehow collecting information that was independent of prosecutors? Well, I basically left that up to my legal people, advisor, and uh, uh, they got a lot of material, but I'm, I'm still not sure that we had all that we really should have gotten. Uh, it's it's just a it's just a it's an extremely difficult decision that you have to make. I agonized over every one of them. I prayed over every one of them. Uh, I, I I I just you know finally came to the decision on all of them 
that I that I dealt with that um, I found no reason not to let the state go forward with what uh, uh, provide. So looking back on your administration, do you have any regrets? Do you have any concerns about allowing those executions to go through? Has your opinion, opinion on the death penalty changed at all since you've left office? Well, I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of questions about the death penalty, whether or not, uh, the, first of all, does the death penalty uh, reduce crime? Is it, is it a deterrent for people? that commit crimes. The people consider that when they commit crimes. They don't. Uh, I mean, that, I, I certainly do not think they do. I mean, most crimes are committed either under the influence or under, they're, they're, they're angry or it's, but they don't think about the death penalty. So does it deter crime? No, it does not. Does it, does it um, improve the lives of anyone? No, it does not. Uh, does it help the family? Well, you know, the family that was damaged if, if when they lost a loved one. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they feel any better afterwards or not. Uh, you know, I, you'd have to ask them because I, I can't answer for them. But, you know, I, I still believe that uh, incarceration for the rest of your life, and, and that's what you do as a governor. You don't you let them out of jail. Uh, what you do is you commit the, the sentence from death to life without parole. Uh, and so they're going to be in jail the rest of their lives. Is that a greater punishment or is the death penalty a greater punishment? That's for other people to decide that. But that's something to think about. Mm -hmm. So looking back on those eight executions, is there anything you wish you would have done differently? Or do you think that if you were given those decisions now that you would make a different decision? I had a couple that I, that I came very close and agonized over. One, one has been rectified where a judge uh, overruled the jury. Uh, but you can't do that in Alabama anymore because uh, after that, uh, we, had, we had laws passed uh, so that a judge cannot overrule a jury. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also had one particular one that I, I, I still have thoughts about because this particular person did not even ask for uh, any type of review of their case. They said they wanted to be killed, they wanted to be executed, they deserved it. And they, they asked for nothing at all uh, as far as any kind of review. Uh, and to be sent before another court, um, and it was a uh, it was a young man who killed a baby, and and I just wondered if it was an accident or not, but he felt so guilty about it. And he said that he didn't want any review of his case, and he wanted to be put to death. Um, and and I questioned that. I, I I questioned, but of course I had no way to go back and look at that, but. Every case I reviewed, every case I, I questioned, uh, when you would go through the cases, obviously, if we're deciding someone deserves it more than others, it's, I hate to be that decision maker. Uh, but, but there were some that were questionable. So I, I still have, I, you are placed in the position as a, as a governor to make this final decision on whether somebody lives or dies. Uh, you know, when you look back, uh, you were the one that made that. So it still lives with you forever. Uh, you, and, and many people can say, and I've had people say this to me, they say, oh, I wouldn't have any trouble. I would, I would pull the lever or whatever, or I would inject the, the medicine and I, I would do this because they deserved it. Well, that's easy to say that from a distance. It's also easy to say when you don't humanize a person. But but when you look at that, that person as a human being, even as uh, even as a horrific crime that they committed, do I have the right as another human being to put that person to death? And that's what I have to do as governor. Do you have any thoughts on? maybe potential reforms that would allow the governor kind of a more two-sided um, 
perspective leading up to these executions? Do you think that there's any way that a, uh, a governor would be able to get better or more information that could um, better help him or her make a decision about these types of cases? I think that, yes, I think that we could. I, I think that we need, first, I'm not too sure that one person should make it. Maybe you should have an advisory panel decision. Someone that was not on one side or the other, or maybe on one side or the other. Uh, you know, I think if we had people to look at it, I also think that we need more investigation into what kind of background the person may have had, uh, what type of childhood they may have had, uh, whether or not they were beating themselves, you know, as a child. I mean, I think we need to know more about the individual that is being put to death. Uh, I, I think that if, you, if we had either a panel or somebody to put these things together, I mean, we could hear from both sides. And honestly, I think the governor only hears from one side. I think if you heard from both sides, it would help you make the decision better, even though it, it would ultimately always be one of the hardest decisions you ever make in your life. Mm -hmm. So there was an, I'm not sure if you've seen this, but I'll describe it to you if you haven't. Um, the, I believe it was the sister of Nathaniel Woods, who was a man who was executed during Governor Ivey's administration, um, went to a press gaggle in the Capitol and, you know, came between the press and Governor Ivey and said to Governor Ivey, you murdered my brother as she was, you know, taken out of the room by her press staff, um, this woman yelled repeatedly, murder, murder. In those types of situations, kind of high stakes situations as a governor, um, does that kind of thing weigh on a governor? Um, is that something that you think, you know, you, for example, if that would have happened to you, would you have gone and thought more about this case in particular? Or is that something that you just, you know, um, kind of move on and try to uh, not ignore, but you know, you, you've got a lot of governing to do, right? Um, so what are your thoughts on that type of situation? Well, I think that uh, maybe every governor is different. Sure. Because uh, every governor, governor has a different background. I, my background being a physician and always trying to save lives and, and keep people alive, alive. I, I think it was maybe harder on me because, because I, I mean, I'm pro-life. I, I believe in, I do not believe in abortions. I do not believe in, in, in euthanasia. I don't believe in, uh, you know, just because they're old or sick. So I believe in life. I don't believe that anyone has the right to take somebody else's life. Uh, I, so it, it, it was hard for me. I, I can't speak for every other governor. Sure. I can't speak for Governor Ivey or anyone that preceded me. Uh, I just know my own personal feelings and, and I know how strongly I feel about life in general uh, and, and how I feel like that we should do everything to not only um, to, to save people's lives, but sometimes maybe give some grace. I, now taking, I, I don't want to take the family out of this. I, I think they should have, uh, they, they should have some say. You know, it is for me not making a decision like that, and I understand, understand what that lady was saying to Governor Ivey. But here again, it's everybody's different. Every governor's different. That's just where I come from. Mm -hmm. It is a struggle. It was a struggle every day. It was every time that I did this. It was a struggle. Uh, and, and do I still remember it all of them? Yes. Uh, but I had to make that decision. It's very much like a soldier in Vietnam or Iraq or some other place. They had to kill people. It was their job. They had to kill people. But no, nobody ever enjoyed doing that. And so this was kind of part of my job enjoy it and 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 I, I i still i still hanging out and 
do I still have second thoughts about some of those? Yes, I do. And I, I, if, if I were there today, I would try to put in place something that would give us more information so that we could make a little bit more decision on, on how we this, this sentence. When you were governor, did you ever hear directly from a death row inmate? Uh, I would get letters, uh, but it would be primarily members uh, and from people who had known the individual. Uh, we would get those, and, and I would read those. Um, but you never spoke directly with any any um, condemned inmate. I did not. Um, I also wonder, did you ever speak to, or have you speaking, spoken since to any family member of someone who's been um, executed under your administration? No, I have not. Um, if you were approached by someone whose, um, whose family member had been executed during your administration or you know, just speaking to them now, um, do you, would you have any message for them? Well, you know, you, you you apologize for what happened, but they have to realize you were put in a situation where you had to do your duty. And uh, you, you swore to uphold the Constitution of the state of Alabama. So you had to uh, execute the laws of the state. That's why you're the chief executive of the state. And so you have to execute those laws but you still could sympathize with the family. You could empathize with them and tell them how sorry you were about what happened. And I think that's all you could do. I wonder a little bit about, um, for example, um, personal reviews of clemency uh, application. So when, you know, obviously we have over a hundred death row inmates. That was of course the case um, during your administration as well. And a lot of these inmates apply for clemency when their um, execution dates are set. Um, in your administration, did you do any personal reviews of clemency applications or was that something that the staff did? Well, the staff did that and they brought the information to me. Uh, but, um, but what I would review you know, that's, that, would, that would have been the decision that we would have made. Granted clemency and, and giving them uh, life without parole versus the death penalty. Sure. So that was, that was the process through which we were going. So what would you say to a death penalty opponent who, uh, and this is said pretty often, a uh, charge lob that um, politicians who support the death penalty politicians who carry out the death penalty, elected officials, um, that your view on being pro-life, you're against euthanasia, you're against abortion, um, that it's not a consistent position to then carry out the death penalty. I agree. It's not. Uh, and I think it, it comes down to, uh, that's why I agonized over it. As I, you know, as I said earlier, I mean, I'm strong pro-life keeping people alive, you know, uh, comfortably. I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, people are brain pain. They, you know, people are going to die. I mean, we know that. And, uh, unfortunately, we've had a lot of people die this last year. Um, but it, you are inconsistent. And uh, I, I understand what they're saying. Some of my closest friends, some of my doctors, it may at one time been for the death penalty. Uh, they've written books and they, they have come and visited me in my office when I was governor. And uh, and I understand where they've come from. They are right now, why they are against the death penalty. Uh, and so, but the decision has to be made. We need to move on. The decision has to be made. Uh, going to carry out the laws of the state or not. Now, however, I will say this. I, I'm not, I can't speak for any other government. And I don't want to do that. But I think sometimes uh, they just kind of leave it up. Maybe they just leave it up to their legal staff and they leave it up to the, to the attorney general's office. Maybe they didn't agonize over every one of them just like I did and, and go through as much material as, that I, as I had. 
to make that final decision. Uh, it's kind of like many of would say, well, the courts have decided, the judges have decided, and, and none of the courts have overruled that, and so we're just going to let it go. Uh, I, I couldn't do that. I, I, had to, I had to be very much involved in, in the decision that I made. I was the one that was going to decide whether or not somebody lived or died. So we've spoken about your duty as governor when it comes to the death penalty and executions. Um, are you personally opposed to the death penalty? Well, I have questions about the death penalty, simply the way I've talked, the way mm -hmm. I feel, having been a physician and, and trying to cure people and, and save lives. As we've already talked about, being very pro I am torn between the two, absolutely. Okay. So I just want to move kind of to the specific case of Willie Smith. So this execution scheduled for October 21st. Um, this is a man who was convicted of murdering the sister of a Birmingham detective back in the 1990s. Um, he has now been on death row for about 30 years. Um, and um, he has an IQ, according to both the prosecution um, and the defense, of about 70, depending, you know, on, on the testing. Um, I, the Supreme Court has ruled executing mentally challenged people unconstitutional, but the 11th Circuit said in this case that um, it was a matter of timing. So, you know, it wasn't ruled unconstitution, unconstitutional until after this case had been adjudicated. Um, do you have thoughts on this particular case and these particular circumstances? I, I don't. I don't know all the story about this. I don't know all the case, and so I, I don't want to have any uh, any fast decision rule about this. But I will say this: I think that you have to take into account uh, a person's IQ. I think you have to take into account some sometimes. Those are the things that, that I would like to know if I were there now. Uh, I would like to know more about the person. I would like to know more about the situation. Having said that, I always want to have respect for that person, for somebody that they love. Uh, and and I, I never never want to take that out, out, of, out of the equation. Uh, but I think someone who is mentally challenged, Think that that if you were a young child and mentally challenged and did things, obviously you wouldn't be in jail. You wouldn't do anything. They wouldn't do anything to you. But uh, I, I just think that um, mental capacity of an individual should come into play. So I want to ask you um, specifically to in this case um, the. Department of Corrections has limited press access to this particular execution. So um, citing COVID, they said that only one reporter, a member of the Associated Press, will be allowed to actually witness the execution. Um, since that decision, has that policy was made by ADOC, vaccines have become widely available, um, right? So there's less of a concern. They've also allow, uh, have conceded and will allow uh, uh, witnesses for the accused in this case, or the convicted in this case, um, as long as they sign a waiver. Um, so CBS 42 has asked to be present. Um, that request has been rejected. We've also offered to sign a waiver. Um, I wonder if you have any thoughts on press access to executions and it being limited in this case. I think this, should, this case should not be was previously. There's no reason they, they can't use COVID as an excuse. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, the so, last so, thing, so, sure, go ahead. I was gonna say, mm -hmm. If I were still governor and you asked me, I would say well, whoever is supposed to come in, come in, just like they did before. Okay. One last thing that I wanted to ask you is kind of a process question. So when you were governor, one of the issues um, that occurred related to the death penalty was that the state of Alabama was having a difficult time getting all of the drugs necessary for lethal injections. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, um, you know, that type of administrative decision and how involved a governor's office is and kind of the 
um, what I think one Supreme Court justice called the machinery of death. So like these technical process issues related to the death penalty. Was that something that came up day to day for you as governor? Well, it did. It did come up. It was it was just it was brought to my attention. I should say that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that most of that. Uh, just, uh, fighting the carrying out of capital punishment. And so the state of Alabama in 2018, I believe, passed a law um, allowing uh, executions by what they call nitrogen hypoxia, which is essentially nitrogen suffocation. They remove the oxygen and you die of hypoxia. Um, do you have an opinion on whether that method is more humane, less humane? Uh, is it a change that you would support when it happens? Or just what are your thoughts on that method of execution? I think executing someone is, is a difficult situation and I, I, I don't have any thought on that and I really don't have any opinion on that. I, I, think it's, I think it's a difficult decision to make for anyone. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, I'm still in that mode of really being concerned about whether or not capital punishment is the answer or not. But way it's, it's carried about, um, I, I, I don't have an opinion on that. Um, I believe I read somewhere that you said you were opposed, though, to moving back to the electric chair. That's a stance you would still stand by, I assume? Uh, yes. I, I, I think that is almost cruel, unusual punishment. Mm -hmm. And do you have any thoughts about uh, arguments that are made by death row inmates about, um, you know, lethal injection also being problematic, being, you know, one of the quotes is being burned from the inside out. Um, do you think that that's legitimate? Do you think, what thoughts do you have about that? Well, here again, I, I, I don't want to get into the, the, the way it's done, uh, except it's, it's certainly less uh, cruel because if you just inject someone with uh, something that puts them to sleep, mm -hmm. they really don't, they don't know what's happening. They don't, they don't realize and they don't feel what, what goes on after death. Well, Governor, I really appreciate you doing this interview. I know we've covered a lot of ground. Um, might've been a little bit more in depth than you were expecting, but I really do appreciate you answering my questions. Is there anything that I haven't asked that you would want to add um, about the subject? No, I, I just think that it, this is a, this should be taken very, very seriously by our state. And I think that uh, we need to, to look at it seriously. And, you know, putting someone to death is a, that's a serious matter and, and whether or not we truly believe in that or not. Uh, the governor, I would always carry out the laws of the state, but, it, but I would hope that your governor would agonize on every time that someone is put to death. Okay. Thank you so much, Governor Bentley, for joining me. Thank you.